Welcome to another GM Tips. This is GM Rick this weekend coming at you for my birthday weekend. I uh, hope everybody's doing great. I know I am. And, uh, you know, birthday weekends always have their ups and downs. They have your good reflections and your negatives. So, but I'm enjoying what I can and trying to live it as best as I can. So I'm going to talk a little bit on one of the realms um, in within Galarian and the Inner Sea and Pathfinder. It's one of the products that Paizo has put out that I've been reading that I really like. Now, mind you, I've got a better condition on this one because this one I kind of was hard on <laughs> and, and when it came to me in the mail. So we have the Occult Realms, and I love what they put on the top of it because it really gives you a taste of what goes on in there with the different types of spiritual uh, guardians. This right here is a basically a spirit guardian or a spirit that's been summoned and this is one of the psychic creatures. So you have some psionic creatures that are involved. Uh, probably an outer veil creature. I should know it. Uh, let's take a look. Let's see what inside it says that this cover um, is Estra's Phantom on air slices through an ancient veiled masters. Ooh, so this right here is your abolith called an ancient veiled master. And they are definitely a psionic creature or a psychic magic creature. So, what do I think of this? Well, so far that I've been reading, I've really liked a lot of material. I always love when they where they tell you in the world have different spirits or spirit. Uh, things and in this one they give you several different things. They give you occult power or an occult location, and they talk a little bit about what is occult power. And I love this because they start off the book with some journals out of uh, an investigator that's checking on a missing girl in the Ramsaran cult uh, near Thrushmere or Thrushmore. And I like it because it gives you a little bit better understanding into um, the cult of Ramsaran, the living god. And I, that's one of the realms that I haven't explored that I want to explore with my players coming forward because I think there's a lot there that can be really cool and a lot that can be done with it that, you know, you don't normally map out. What do you do with the cult of uh, a living god? Remember um, the Conan movie where doom, 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 and they had the living god, Doom. Was it Raza Doom, I think it was? No, not Raza. How, what was his name? You know, it was uh, James Earl Jones who played him. And that whole thing around that, that is the cult of Ramsaran, the, the living god. So, they talk a little bit about occult power. What is occult power? And they go into the different legendary spirits, the collective esoterica, elemental saturation areas, Psytech, Thassalonian uh, phantoms. And if you haven't played the realm, Thassalon is an ancient empire of Aslanti that came over to Aviston and settled up near Varisha. And, and what, what is Varisha today was settled by the Thassalonian Empire. And then the umbral men mesmerism for the umbral court. And so they give you a, a, a great thing on these different places. So this place is in Absalom, collects, Collection Esoterica, and it was set up in the, the major city of Absalom. Uh, then they go into the elemental saturation, and where are these locations? And where can a kineticist really see a power boost? And so, you know, the spell car scarred desert, which is down in the Mana Wastes, the, um, it, it has a lot to do with a certain type of kinetic magic. Then the Eye of Abendigo has another kinetic magic, and you can kind of guess a little bit about what these are. Um, then you have the S then you have the crystal magic uh, that is near uh, some of the places on the world itself, maybe in the Underdark. Hmm. And then they have what is the water one. And so they go through where these realms are. They also talk about legendary spirits and the different legendary spirits that can help a spiritualist. So I really like that. There, there's some great material on that. Then SciTech. Of course, we all know where the SciTech's going to be. That's Numenera. <laughs> and uh, our Numeria. 
Sorry, I'm getting the game mixed up. Uh, then you have the Thessalonian phantoms that come from the ancient empire of Thessalon and, and the different types of things. So you have the different types like greed, lust, and pride, which align up with the Thessalonian lords that ruled the area that were known for these type of vices. Then the Umbral Court and Shadow Mesmer, Mesmerism. And the Umbral Court is actually just north of um, of uh, Chel the Chelish Empire. Hmm. Wonder what's up there. Starts with an N and ends with an all. <laughs> so if you haven't looked at that empire or you haven't done it, take a look inside the Inner Sea campaigns. Then they give you different occult locations. And I love that because they give you some places around the world. So the Center for Psychogenic Advancement. They go to the Isle of Hermea. Mm, not much known about the Isle of Hermia, and this is a nice little opener of what goes on to advance the the good humanism that the gold dragon on that island has started out. Then Denebrum, down in the the realm of Orv, and they get into the Sagathi as well as dun dun da the Neolithids. So this is a great place for the Dark Veil vale type of location and that type of psychic power, psionic power. The Grand Surat on Jalmaray. Uh, the Grand Surat was built by one of the Maharajas from uh, Kazmaron to the the uh, to the east, and so you get a little bit of idea what happened when he settled for a while into Jalmaray and what he built there. And the Grand Surat was one of these areas, and it's a location of teaching that goes along with the the um, the occult magic. Then you have the Temple of the Sunken Sign. They go to Lergan, and Lergan is there. And you don't get much in the Sodden Lands, but Lergan is an interesting place that has a lot about occult mystery there. The the Vergan Forest in Ramsaran, of course. Why not? Let's go to Ramsaran and flesh it out a little more. Love that they did this. Uh, and then Ziha in Tianxia. And this is an area where the blue-skinned race is, let me guess, Sam Sarans. And again, I know they don't go deep into the Sam Sarans. You can get a lot of that from Alice Siguanis. He, he does a great job of fleshing it out a little bit further as a third party. So if you want to play a Sam Saran and you don't have enough information from Paizo, go to his works and he'll be able to give you some stuff. So I'm giving a little plug to Alex there. Uh, and so they give you some great information. I love it. Not only the great information, but they give you places of interest as well as maps. So they really go into depth in these different areas. And especially I liked with the Neolithids. They talk a little bit about them and give you a better idea of Orv and the Neolithids. And they actually give you a map for a part of Orv, which you don't normally get in any of the other Paizo stuff. So I really love that they get into depth with this. Um, and they go into depth with each of these places. And so, you know, you can see, what is this? A Boggard in Lerga who's running this one. So there's some great places that you can go for these different things. And, and you get to see a fleshing out of these different areas. Um, then they go to some other places around the world. So, um, actually, I'm sorry, Ziha, yes, Tensia which they give you some great a great map of Tianxia, which they really go in, which we've been complaining we don't have enough on the Dragon Empires. You want some more on the Dragon Empire. Here's some things right here. And then Beyond Galarian, and I love that they go Beyond Galarian because that's the one thing they've done with the occult adventures is they've gone beyond the world. They've gone to the plains. They've gone to other places of interest. So they talk about other planets, outer planes, and other places. So they have Ayat Sharasta and the Akashic Theastiary. They have the Citadel of Black, which is in the planet of Octurn, which is an interesting and weird planet. The Heralds Fall in the Ethereal Plane, and they talk a little bit about uh, this area of Talbu. And then they go into Minor Minavor. Minavor is actually um, uh, created by accident with the, the fight between Geb and Nex. And then the temple, again, I love this, the temple of Desna's first dream. So this is literally 
uh, while Fastalon was there, this is where this temple was. And then they go into a little bit into the ritualism and the idolism, which is really cool because you can do some ritualism in the game. They give you some different things like ang analytical congress, audiera activation, ethereal apothesis, and uh, fiendish transformation reconsecrated altar and the scarlet vigil so they give you some different practices and rituals that you don't get a lot of it they hint a little bit at it in the occult mysteries but they don't really go into depth here they go into depth the trial of the 16th step Ramzaram and, and Ramzir and then they have some things in the trials of the drowned god and there's some scary stuff there you know that you can get from that and then they have different idols and and how idols affect different ability scores and they give you some samples of the idols and then at the end they give you this picture of the bloody battle going on between the abolith um, and what do i think of it as a whole i liked it i wanted more and so paizo he whetted my appetite i want more I want in Occult Realms 2 and 3, because I know there's other ones that are there. Um, and so I love that they're going more into the distant shores and giving you just a little bit to whet your appetite when it comes to different things. Like they give you, a, in distant shores, they give you a, one of the places in Aslant, and they give you some other places that you wouldn't have had. So... I'm liking that they're getting more and more in depth into some other places in the world. I would give it, honestly, probably a three and a half to four out of five. Where's my down shoot with this? The cover. And guys, you guys did a great job of getting me a replacement, which I put in plastic, by the way. But the covers on some of these are a little bit less than desirable. And if there was one thing I would say to Paizo as a whole, and I know you guys are trying to, to maximize your efforts and, and with that comes profitability. So I understand the business aspect as a sales guy. But at the same time, there's some places I would go and I would check out some of the places that Wizards is using for their books because honestly, from what I hear, the Wizard books uh, for D&D 5e are a lot hardier. So that would be my only knock to any of your material is that the book bindings as well as some of the cover material for some of the softer bound books leaves a little bit to be desired as well as some of the glues other than that the material itself is really good I give five out of five for the material three and a half out of five for the construction so would I recommend you buying this yes at least in PDF form if you don't get it in the hardcover and I would definitely get it for uh, Hero Lab and definitely pay the money the four ninety nine to get it in Hero Lab. So I really like this and, and and I would say this if you haven't tried the occult magic and the occult adventures and the occult gaming, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Because I think more than anything else, they open a dimension of weirdness and fun that you don't get to get. This is your Call of Cthulhu dip right here and into some areas that are very odd and unique and strange. Um, now, two other books that I'll give a quick blurb on, and, and I'm not going to dive too far into depth. Um, the Weapon Master's Handbook and the Armor Master's Handbook. First of all, A+, plus, 5 out of 5 on this one. I love the armor feats and different training and other things that they give you and tricks that are involved. I like that they go deeper into these different groups and talk about them a little more. Who are they? They are the Red Mantis Society, the Horse Tribes that are over in Kazmaron, the Pure Legion, which is out of Rahadun, the Golden Legion, which is um, the, the part of the Golden Crusade, the Knights of, uh, the Eagle Knights, I'm sorry, the Eagle Knights of Andoran, the Hell Knights, which they did a whole book on, which, you know, you guys have seen my review on. Wes did a super job with his crew on that one. Um, the Knights of Ozum and the Grey Maid Maidens, and they also hit the Mercenary League out of Druma, which has not been hit up to now, which I really like that. And they really go in and give you some very useful feats and items in here. Now, I know some of you want the most powerful things possible to build the more, most powerful characters possible with the best bang for your buck. 
I like that Paizo doesn't go overboard on these things, but they really give you some pluses and abilities in here that are really strong. Now, the Weapon Master's Handbook. I love it because they get into um, some of the different long swords of the different areas of the world, and they get into... Um, you know, different fighting techniques. So fighting trickery, divine fighting techniques, racial weapon masters, as well as range weapons and melee, and then the advanced weapon training types that you can use with your classes, as well as your uh, ranged weapons and melee weapons. So they break it into the two. Uh, they give you stamina and combat tricks, which is really good because if you're fighting long enough, your stamina may give uh, magic item mastery and weapon design. So you can do, they give you some thoughts on designing your own weapons and magical weapons. So I think this actually is a four and a half out of five. I wish they would have gone a little more like they did in the armor one with some of the groups, but they did okay with it. And I really think there's some useful things here as well. Overall, I love a lot of Paizo material, and I know, guys, it costs a lot of money. Here's my suggestions to you if you don't want to buy the print. Buy the PDFs, which are very reasonable in, in price, but buy them for Hero Lab, too, because Hero Lab is very cost-effective. And if you're building your characters using Hero Labs, I think it's a way to go. And I tell people this because Wolf Layer did a great job with not only this, but with other systems. And they've really, with Paizo, taken the time to really make the add-ons and the adaptations work really well. They're not perfect, but if you want to use something and not spend a lot of money on every book that they put out, and maybe you, you like some things about it, but you just want to add it into making of your character sheets, you can do it there. And I think there's a real benefit to it. And it will save you money in the long run. It really does. I was telling one of my players this. Get a couple of the books that you really like for your players, you know, Game Masters, you're going to spend some more. It's just the reality of being a Game Master in a system like this. But realize, these books are well worth it. I think, in my mind, I would pay for them again after I bought them. Now, not every Paizo book has been that way. But I would say, especially within the last year and a half, two years, they've gotten better at, at some of the material and focusing it in a little better. So really take the time to do it. Really take the time to explore it a little bit. I mean, if you want, always get the PDF. Um, I've done a subscription, and one thing I suggest to anybody who likes the Adventure Paths, one of the best deals that Paizo does right now is they offer a deal where you can sign up for 30% off the cover price of the Adventure Paths, okay? You're thinking, oh wow, big deal, I'll, I'll get that back in the shipping costs. Ah, but you won't. And here's where you get your benefit. Not only do you get the print copy, but you get the PDF download for free. That's another $15.99 in value. So not only are you saving six to seven bucks off the book price, now you're saving another 16 bucks off of buying the actual uh, PDF copy. So now you have a $23 savings out of a $50 combination. That's significant, folks. And that, to me, is the best value. No offense to, to buying the cover price books and everything else to get them early. To me, the Adventure Path deal by Paizo is the best deal there is in any, any company that's out there. So really take advantage of that. Sign up for those adventure paths. If you are a Pathfinder or a beginning Pathfinder GM and you really want to get into these paths, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It is well worth signing up for. The most you ever pay is twice a month. And let's be honest, if it's, if it's $34 a month you're paying but getting four different deals, two print, two non-print uh, PDF forms, it's well worth the money. You're looking at $46 for a $100 value, so it's a $54 savings. And so I would do it in a heartbeat. And I have. I've re-signed up for it. So really take that to heart. I mean, it's one of my little things that I'll share with you that I think is well worth it. And you can adapt these paths to any system. You can do them to 5e. You can do them to other D20 games. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, thanks, and have a great weekend. Guys and ladies, thank you so much for tuning in to my stuff and making it so worthwhile.